Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to look at the partial differential equation again, but this time we are going to look at the Poisson equation. So in the previous uh, video, we have actually solved the Laplace equation. So if you remember the Laplace equation, you have a uh, del operator squared, uh, multi, uh, you act this uh, del on the function, and then the, on the right hand side, this is going to be equals to zero. Uh, this is uh, the case when you are trying to solve for situations where there is no source, right? So if you if you just imagine in this picture on the left here, uh, this is the example that we gave. There is this uh, metal bar where you have uh, uh, the all the sides are insulated. You have a uh, zero degrees here, but then over here you actually you have a you have a, a heat source uh, which is at one hundred degrees Celsius, right? And in the previous video, we look at the Laplace equation, which is valid further away from the source, right? So it is uh, somewhere here. This is uh, where your Laplace equation is is uh, valid. And we have solved that, right? So, but then when you go nearer to the source, uh, this uh, in this case, your Laplace equation is not valid because you have a source. So here, we have to consider the Poisson equation. So the right-hand side of the Laplace equation is not going to be zero. Okay, so that uh, that is uh, what Poisson equation is and how it relates to the Laplace equation. So this is, uh, as you look at this title, it is the, the diffusion or heat flow, right? So it works uh, for diffusion and it works for heat flow as well. So let's uh, look at this. Uh, how do we get the general solution for this case first? So now let us go to the general solution for the Poisson equation. So here you have uh, you have here on the left hand side this looks exactly the same like what you have for the Laplace equation, but now on the right hand side this is non-zero, right? So alpha here represents uh, the diffusion coefficient or the heat transfer coefficient, dependent depending on what kind of a situation that you are looking at. Uh, this small t here refers to time. And uh, the U now is basically the same, it has the same meaning as the capital T that we use for the first video on Laplace equation. So in the video on Laplace e equation, we are talking about a heat flow, right? And we put a U, we actually wrote it as capital T to represent temperature. But in this case, well, we, do not, we do not want to confuse ourselves between uh, capital T and the small t here, right? So there will be a function with, which depends on time. So we wrote, we wrote here, instead of a capital T, we write it as U. So U here is a, is a temperature. So we are going to consider a case where you have a heat flow, right? Okay, so now how do we solve this uh, Poisson equation, right? We will first assume that the, the separation of variable is, is uh, valid here so that uh, you have u which depends on uh, x and t and this is going to be equals to f which is a function that depends on x alone uh, and you have a function capital T that depends on time alone, right? So this is a case for a, sp a special uh, 1D, right? So you only depends on x uh, but the the uh, argument is going to be valid for a uh, larger, larger than 1D system. Uh, of course, there is a slightly different um, uh, equation that comes out of it, but then the idea is, uh, is the same. Okay, so you, you will be using the separation of variables for the spatial part as well. But uh, let us just look for the 1D case uh, for uh, simplicity to get the idea across first. Right, so now what we do is that we are going to put u back into the Poisson equation uh, and then you will see that uh, you just have to do differentiate uh, twice. You take the partial uh, derivative of u and you will see that uh, the capital T here has no dependence on x. So this is uh, the partial derivative of this is going to be zero, right? So you have, there is nothing here. So you just replace it out, take it out, and then you will have a d squared f over dx squared. So now this becomes an ordinary differential. So because uh, the f depends only on x, right? So on the right-hand side here, you do the same, and then you will have this expression. You know? So from this expression, uh, you will have to divide them by u again. So you divide both sides by u. To basically to cancel out the uh, the functions, so that on the left hand side you only have a function that depends on f alone, uh, on x alone, 
okay and uh, on the right hand side it depends only on t okay so it means uh, here this depends on the spatial part and this depends on the time part right? so you have uh, left and right uh, equals to one another but they depends on uh, two independent variables and therefore the only situation that this occurs is when they are equals to a constant so you can choose uh, the constant that uh, the form of the constant that you want but in this case we are taking this to be equal to negative k squared uh, and this is what you see over here so on the left hand side here you will write this equals to minus k squared so the f here can be brought up to the right hand side uh, so that you have this expression here okay so this is uh, for 1d but uh, for 2d you can actually get a similar expression um, uh, but we are going to skip that for now so that will be actually be a very good exercise for you to try to do it so let's uh, just uh, pause there and we come back to the 1d so this is the equation that you need to solve for the spatial part and on the uh, right hand side over here you have the dependence on time and this is going to be again equals to negative k squared so you are going to bring this to uh, denominator to the uh, right hand side so that you have this term right okay so now you just have to find the solution for this two equation and that will be this this solution will be fed back to this uh, this general expression so that you will get your u so now I, I wrote the two uh, solutions so for the spatial part you have this equation that you want to solve so you must uh, find a general expression a general function that fulfills this equation and we have seen uh, in the previous videos that uh, the f is of the form sine kx and cos kx right so I just give a proof here so for example if you consider fx equals to sine kx uh, you can put back uh, you can put this uh, function back on the left hand side differentiate twice and then you will get again negative k squared sine kx right so here you have a f over here and here you have a fx over here so this shows that uh, sine kx fulfills this uh, this equation now on the right hand side here is the solution for the time dependent part right so for the part time dependent part this is a uh, first order differential equation which is uh, very simple to solve. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. So, but uh, so I, I skip a lot of uh, steps. But uh, you will you will do it on your own, and you will see that the function t now is written like this, right? So, at this is a uh, the, the 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 function t when t is equal to zero, the small t the time is equal to zero. So the initial the initial function and this is going to be exponential minus alpha squared k squared so k, k here is uh, is um, a parameter that you will determine based on the boundary condition uh, from this special part you, you can you you can actually get it from from here uh, so the the only thing that you don't know now is the alpha so alpha depends on what kind of situation that you are looking at so if you're talking about the diffusion so this is going to be your diffusion coefficient in the material for example air uh, or if you're talking about the heat flow right so you have a heat transfer coefficient uh, in the system as well so here what we have done is we have seen the general solution to the Poisson equation so the message to bring across is that uh, the time dependent part is, uh, is easy so the solution is of this form uh, and the only difficult part is now uh, the spatial part because this is 1d uh, you have to know what is your boundary conditions to determine some parameters for example variables I mean uh, the k squared right uh, and then as you have seen in the Laplace equation you need to consider a Fourier series uh, and you need to determine what is your Fourier coefficients so uh, we will stop here. So this is your general solution for your Poisson equation.